Welcome back to the first law of thermodynamics in physical chemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in the past few videos, we've been looking at definitions of, say, um, internal energy, enthalpy, heat, heat capacity, and work. Okay, now it's time to actually apply those to different situations. Okay. And we're going to assume these situations are reversible. Okay, we talked about reversibility in a previous video. If you don't know what that is, um, basically go back and review it. But there's several different situations we can have where we're ultimately doing some kind of thermodynamic process. Okay, the process can be isothermal, which is what we're going to do in this video. It can be isochoric, meaning there's no change in volume. It can be isobaric, no change in pressure. And then we can also have something called an adiabatic process, which means the heat is zero. All right, in this, pro in this video, we're going to look at how to calculate work, heat, enthalpy, and internal energy for an isothermal process. And isothermal means that delta T is zero, meaning the temperature is not changing. Okay, we have a constant temperature. Okay, now recall the first law of thermodynamics. That says that delta U, the internal energy, is equal to the work plus the heat. Okay. One thing that you have to remember is for an isothermal process where the temperature is constant, delta U is zero. So basically for any process that you do, you can basically automatically put internal energy zero when the temperature is constant. And that's going to be important because of this first law right here. Because if delta U is zero, I could just set that equal to zero as being equal to work plus the heat. So that implies these two things. Either the work is equal to the negative of the heat or the heat is equal to the negative of the work. Because notice what I can do is I can just say subtract heat from both sides of this equation. And that's actually what gets me this one right there. Work is equal to the negative heat. I could have also subtracted work from each side and gotten the second one. These are equivalent statements. Okay, So that means I only need to calculate heat or work. And then to get the other one, I just take the negative of it. Well, it turns out that it's actually... Um, it's actually a lot easier just to calculate the work and then take the um, negative of that to get the heat. So let's deal with an ideal gas. So recall this is the ideal gas equation of state. Okay, P is equal to nRT over V. Now if I want to find the work that that does, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the negative integral of nRT over V. That's the pressure right here, P, times dV. All right from V1 to V2. Now when I integrate this, nRT are just constants, so here's negative nRT. When I integrate dV over V, that's the natural log of V2 over V1. That's something we explored in another video. So this is the work due to an isothermal process. Okay. Now we haven't indicated what V1 and V2 are. Is this a compression? Is this an expansion? But remember that this is going to basically always be true for an ideal gas. The work is going to be negative nRT ln of V2 over V1. Okay, so that's how you would calculate the work. Now, if you knew V1 and V2, all you would do is plug them into here and get the work. If I wanted to get the heat, then I'm just going to take the negative of the work, as shown right there. Okay, so whatever the work is, I'm going to take the negative, and that's the heat. So if this is the work right here, what's the heat? I'll do this in red. What would the heat be? Well, if the work is negative nRT ln of V2 over V1, then that means the heat is just nRT times the natural log of V2 over V1, right? Because it's just the negative of the work. Hopefully that makes sense. And because delta U is zero, okay, these two have to add up to be zero. All right. So we know delta U is zero. We know what the work and the heat are now. Now the question is, how do we find the enthalpy for this? Now there's really two equations that are essentially identical, um, but two different forms to find enthalpy. One of them is shown right here, the other is shown right there. Either you would use delta H equals delta U plus nR delta T, or you can use delta H equals delta U plus V delta P plus P delta V. All right, so here's the problem here, okay? When you have an isothermal process, okay, so for an isothermal process, you're actually going to assume two things, okay? Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. Here's the two things you assume. So, number one, delta V, the change in volume, is not zero. That means that the volume is changing, okay? The other thing you're going to assume is 
delta P is also not zero. Pressure is changing, meaning that pressure and volume are changing. Why is that important here? Well, look at the second equation. How would I deal with V delta P if volume and pressure are changing? Well, the delta P won't be hard to deal with because pressure is changing. I just need to know the change in pressure. But volume is changing, okay? So what, how do you deal with a changing volume if you just have V? Well, you'd have to have delta V, but again, volume's not changing, so this thing doesn't make physical sense with the, with the conditions we have. Here I have P delta V, okay? Now volume's changing, so obviously I have a delta V. That's not hard to deal with, but pressure is also changing. So how do I deal with this P right there? That, you know, that, that seems like a, a big pain because pressure's changing. How do I deal with a P? Well, the way you would deal, that, deal with that if you wanted to do that is you just say, well, P is equal to NRT over V. Likewise, V is equal to NRT over P, right? And technically, this is going to be the integral of V dP. This is the integral of P dV. Then you would, you know, plug P into here. You plug V into here and integrate everything and add them. Okay, that's a big pain in the butt. You don't want to have to do that. So it turns out that this this group of terms right here, VDP plus PDV, is actually equivalent to NR delta T, okay? Well, that's pretty handy because delta T is zero, right? It's isothermal. Delta T is zero, so this delta T is zero, right? So that means we have delta U plus zero, so that means that the enthalpy for, night, for this ideal gas is zero, okay? So, in fact, isothermal processes are actually ones that you like. They're one of the easier ones to deal with. One of the more difficult ones is actually the isobaric process, but isothermal is probably the easiest one to deal with. Um, isochorics are also um, not too difficult to deal with. But hopefully this makes sense. When you have an isothermal process because delta T is zero, meaning no change in temperature, delta U is zero for an ideal gas, delta H is zero, and then the work is just the negative of the heat. So anytime you have an isothermal process, I would say the first thing you need to calculate, this is an important thing, the first thing is going to be the work. That's the very first thing you need to calculate, and then everything else just follows from that, which is pretty much just the heat, okay, because that's all the only thing that, that's not zero. Okay, so hopefully this video helped with isothermal processes for the um, four basic functions that you first learn. In the next video, we're going to look at an isochoric process and do the exact same thing. See you in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe.